Oh, hey. There you are. Are you okay? Um, no. It's okay. Come here, I'm not gonna hit you. That was yesterday's news. Here, let me help you. Hey, that's a bit. <laughs> Fantasy football fans, welcome to week two of Hot Tub Sleeper Picks. <laughs> that was quite an exciting week one, wasn't it? Uh, not if you're a Falcons, Colts, or Steelers fan. Or a Peyton Manning or Aaron Foster owner. True, but we sort of saw a Foster one coming. Yup, which is why we called Ben Tate's number for week one. Exactly. So before we get to this week's picks, let's check out how we did all around last week. Barbarian. A lead, a lot of Adrian Peterson and Donovan McNabb. Yeah, the Vikings blew that one, but anyway, let's get started. My sleeper pick is Cleveland quarterback Colt McCoy. After a tough loss to the Bengals last week, kicking me out of my knockout pool. Thanks, guys. The Browns get to face the suddenly hapless Colts at Indy. While some may rightfully expect a big return for Peyton Hillis in this one, I expect the Colts to attack him via the air. Even in defeat, McCoy displayed flashes of brilliance. And with young receivers and Brian Rubisky and Greg Little carrying a ton of potential, expect the Browns to further test their young quarterback's arm. I expect 250 plus yards and at least two touchdowns. I wouldn't be surprised to see him run one in either. If you need a quarterback to plug in, you could do a lot worse. Thanks, Michelle. Now let's head over to our injury nurse, Ashley. Thanks, Barb. This week, I'm focusing on the trio of injuries in St. Louis. Steven Jackson and Danny Amendola are going to miss some time, and quarterback Sam Bradford will be playing with some serious damage in his throwing hand. Now, most might think this means grab Cadillac Williams, and well, yeah, if he's free, do it, but I'm going to focus on the Rams' preseason stud, tight end Lance Kendricks. Bradford's going to play, and he loves this rookie. I expect the young tight end's targets to go way up these next few weeks and expect him to seriously rock, scoring a few touchdowns and getting lots of yardage. And if you have room, I would definitely get this guy. All right, now it's time for the other Ashley sleeper pick, a backup in Tampa. You got it, Ashley, and thanks. My sleeper pick is indeed Ernest Graham, running back for Tampa Bay Bucks. I know there are very few of you out there that can imagine a day you put Graham on your roster. But with Freeman maturing, he needs a running back capable of catching the ball in the flats. Graham is that back. This week, the Bucks faced Minnesota, who got bulldozed by Mike Talbert last week, mostly on short passes out of the backfield. Expect a replay with Graham filling the role this Sunday. Legarry Blount will get his carries, but Graham will be the pass catcher. Racking up the receiving yards and finding the end zone at least once. He is a no-brainer in the PPR leagues, at least worth a pickup and a spot on your bench. Until it Garrett shows, he is in fact a consistent playmaker. All right, now let's check in with this week's Stardom Sidem Slumber Party. Thanks girls and welcome back to the bedroom for this week's Stardom Sidem Slumber Party. Before we dive in, let's check out how we did last week. We rocked it. So let's get to it. My must start this week is the one and only Chad Ochocinco. How is it possible that on a record setting night where Tom Brady throws for 512 yards, all that Ocho has is 14? If there's one thing that Brady and Belichick love to do, it's spread the love and change things up. In what will surely be a shootout of the Chargers, expect him to get mucho targuitos. This may sound crazy after how underutilized he was Monday night in Miami, but I expect a 100-yard performance from the former Bengal and at least one touchdown, not to mention a very muted celebration in his new uniform. Make sure you give him another shot in your lineup this week. It's interesting. Now, my must-sit for the week is the Garrett Blount. Now, I know that Raheem Morris lamented he should have gotten Blount more carries in the week one loss to the Lions, but that really doesn't mean much to me. Blount is a bruising runner who will run you over or jump over you. I don't see that happening against a Minnesota front line that softened up late against the Chargers. 
Expect them to impose their will in their home opener, forcing the Bucks to go to the air more often than they'd like. Until he proves last year was no fluke, I'd keep Blount on the bench if you have any other options. Yeah, and if he can't run against the Lions, I don't know who he'd be able to run against. Really. <laughs> so, there you have it. Back to the hot tub. Thanks, Courtney and Kristen. Now my sleeper pick this week is Nate Burleson, wide out for the Detroit Lions. Did Matthew Stafford look awesome last week? Yes. Did Calvin Johnson score two sick touchdowns? Yep. Will Burleson benefit from every bit of additional coverage defenses throw at Megatron from now on? Yeah. The Lions look like they could be the next greatest show on turf, and this week's opponent, the Kansas City Chiefs, just got blown out by Ryan Fitzpatrick and his four touchdown passes. The Chiefs have a lot of problems, and the next one will be how to slow down this Lions aerial attack. As they scramble to slow down Johnson, look for Stafford to look Burleson's way a lot, just as he did during the preseason. Expect Burleson to finish the day with at least six catches for 80 yards and a touchdown at least. So, those are our sleeper picks for week two. Don't forget to show us some love and like this episode. It's the only way we know you care. And don't forget to leave a comment. You could be the winner of some seriously exclusive hot tub sleeper pick swag. And congrats to DuckKnuckle72 on being our week one winner. Flattery will get you everywhere. Until next time, bye. bye. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This week's waiver wire pickup is Seattle wide receiver Doug Baldwin. The Stanford Cardinal ground was drafted and beat the odds to make the team. And thus far, he's looked more like a legit number one receiver than anyone else in Seattle. Last week's touchdown and 83 yards attest to that. Right now, I just keep an eye on the guy. If he sees another week of consistent targets, grab him. And keep in mind, if the Seahawks stink it up all year and end up with the first pick of the draft, Andrew Luck loved looking Baldwin's way in college. 